I got to start this motherfucking party off red night. Hello! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, players and pimps of all ages, shapes, sizes, and colors, it's your host with the most, Finding Nemo, a.k.a. Nemo Hoes, and you inside the GGN News Network. And today I got a very special guest, one of my young homeboys from the LBC, north side that is. Give it up for my nephew, Vince Staples. What it do, nephew? Sure, man. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing. Man, how you been, dog? I'm good, just working. I'm trying to figure it all out. Day at a time. So you having fun? Yeah, man, it's, it's way more fun than whatever I'm used to. So I'm just, you know, I'm taking it all in, just trying to know what the next moves is going to be. Man, it says you was born in 93. Man, my first album came out in 93. I know, a couple months before I was born. I'm saying. You know what I'm talking about? That's a good thing. So what, what was the music that made you want to feel like you could rap? Man, you know, it's crazy. It wasn't even really the music that made me want to think about it. It was... It's just something that happened. It just kind of fell into my hands, you know. I got in a little bit of a situation, so I had to, you know, stay out the way. Mm -hmm. So I was just with, it was, we was living by the park. It's like the homies over here and some other, only other people I knew that I was close to my house had ended up making music. And then I just I started kicking with them a little bit. And then when I started kicking with them, they brought me around other people and it just grew. You know, when you were a kid, if your friends play basketball, you play basketball, your friends skateboard, you skateboard, all of that. So that was just another one of them things. But the time where I grew up at, it wasn't really, a lot of music coming out to kind of shape who we was. You know, we I came out tail end of the East Side as beginning of it, so that was always strong in the city. Mm -hmm. And we had you and we had game. We ain't had nothing else. Mm -hmm. And Kanye, that's it. Wow. We it was lean with it, rock with it. The whole my whole childhood basically. Oh, okay, okay. So that's the era that you came up in. Yeah. So the style of music that you make, what do you consider? What do you classify it as? I don't know, it's like a little bit of everything, you know, one thing about music is you can draw inspiration and take it from anywhere, so really what I just did is, I didn't really know too much about the making of the music, I just knew what I thought sound good, mm -hmm. whether it was, you know, breaking different genres or just rhyme schemes, anything like that, I just took what I already knew from what I had liked to hear and just try to combine what I had known, so it kind of came from a personal place more than anything, I just wanted to make what I thought sound good. Cause I ain't the only person that might have thought it sound good. You know what I mean? If you can sleep with it at the end of the day, then mm -hmm. we can we can make it work. Tell us about your um, your recent debut album, Summertime '06. What inspired that? Man, just you know what, what was going on. Everybody who out here know how the summer switch everything up, and that was really kind of my first one. Just being young and being 13 years old, you know, you start to think you've grown, and just experiences that I had went through at that time kind of shaped who we was. It was a turning point in life. Like at that point in time we was doing like flirts and flip and all the little clicks and little shit like mm -hmm. that. And then it it grew into something more without us really knowing what it was. And I seen people that have been my homies my whole life because you know from playing football and just all that other stuff, just show where they loyalty lie, just do the falling into the trap, so to mm. say. And that's really that's really what that summer was, was seeing everybody switch. Something that we we was all together and then after that one you ain't know nobody no more. Boy, I can identify with that. That's a hell of a concept. Uh, because the summer is usually the time when, you know, things tend to go awry or go, you know, a separate way. Because it's just that it's the atmosphere, it's what's in the air. Exactly. That's G. You associated with Earl Smith, No ID, Janae Aiko, Mac Miller, tours, collaborations with Earl Sweatshirt, Schoolboy Q. Man, I mean, how, how does it feel to be able to have all that under your resume? It's cool, man. You know, right place, right time. Just getting around the right people. I'm lucky enough to have. It was a lot of people that believe in what I was doing even before it was where it's at now. Cause I, I was making some trash for a long time, like everybody is. You just that's gotta, what it is. Yeah, gotta, we all started off making garbage until we got to the point where we knew what it was. Yeah. So just they, they kind of seen what it was before. Then like, Q took me on tour. I don't know without even really knowing a lot about what my music was. But I had met him a couple times. He just wanted me to go on there, go with him, and see what it was. You know, keep mm -hmm. me out of keep me out of trouble, same with Earl and all these other people. And just, I just appreciate it, man, because them is some real names to be able to be. Yeah, next them heavyweights, boy. <laughs> You're doing that. Now, growing up in Long Beach, what made you stay away from gangs and get into the mindset of getting paid and staying out of trouble? It, it's a difference between Long Beach and other places. Like, it ain't L.A. Or, or any of these bigger places. It's a smaller place, so you grow up. 
just already being from the hood. Mm -hmm. Whether whether you whether you choose to go full fledged with it or not, and a lot of people chose not to. A lot of people chose to, but when certain people start dying, like when I was uh, about 15, 16, one of my close homies I grew up with named Jabari had got popped, mm. and after that, it was, you know, ain't no reason not to. But I was lucky enough just to have my mom and my daddy come from the same because my parents from Compton. They moved to Long Beach on some let's get out the way type shit. So I was able to kind of learn a lot from them to where all that shit ain't take me under. Because at, at the same point in time, I always knew certain stuff was stupid and certain stuff wasn't necessary. You know, I knew what was going to get me in trouble, but none of that mattered when you're there. Mm -hmm. So we was just trying to, you know, we there. So we got to, you know, you got to do what you got to do for whatever you got to do it for. And that's what it was, but I just got lucky, man, you know. My mom granny always told me, God make everything happen for a reason, so yeah. it's a reason I'm supposed to still be here right now. So. Yeah, no, that granny wasn't lying. For real. Tell me about uh, playing in the Snoop U Football League for the Compton Vikings. Oh, that was bad. That shit saved our motherfucking life. Orange County Junior All-American Football League was trash, bruh. That team taught us how to grow up. Because mm -hmm. it wasn't about, you know, you know the son, the coach put his son at the quarterback, you know, shaking the keys, ain't really coaching, oh, go get some sodas, nigga. It wasn't none of that type mm -hmm. of situation. It was really trying to teach us structure yeah. and how to behave and get right. And, yeah. You, you know, can look back on it now and see that it was some hell yeah, man. great like, shit going on. Yeah, because it's like we, and it was, it was the coaches, it was kind of the same people that we, you know, had Coach Smitty, you know, Coach James, all them other people mm -hmm. that was around that they was coaching for the Titans. Yeah, yeah they was coaching for, you know, Mona Park. They yeah. was coaching for, uh, for, uh, for, for the, for the, uh, for the uh, North Long Beach Panthers. Mm -hmm. thing. Like, they was coaching for everybody. But when they made that switch, of course, you follow them because them is the homies, daddies. And yeah, and they daddy. know what they're talking about. Exactly. So when it, when it came to the, uh, to the league and we really had structure and things like that and practice what was on time and they was on time and we was Y'all niggas look really sweet as trophy. motherfuckers. Yeah, we had, we, we had the cold uniform. You niggas was purple. Purple don't like nobody and had purple helmets, purple jersey, purple pants, purple shoes. Baby in the crowd, Compton, <laughs> Vikings, people don't like nobody. I'm it's like, funny, funny, damn. I was, I was trying to play for the Browns when I was younger. For the Long Beach Browns? Yeah, my mom was like, no, you ain't playing over. No you playing at Compton. I'm like, I'm really, <laughs> I really, I couldn't play with my friends. I got to play with my cousins. They was trash. But we almost got there, though. See, that's a good thing that you came out to SYFL and you pursuing other things like music. They need to know that all the homies that come out the league not gonna do football. They gonna be inspired to do other things and them teachings and them lessons that you got help you along the way. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, you said, it gave you that structure. structure yeah. Because a lot of times, especially with my dad going out of pain and stuff like that, you don't really get time to really appreciate that much. Shit. A lot of times people chug up a lot of things that happen in you know, black communities and you know, Latino communities, things like that, just a bad parenting. But sometimes it ain't that. If your mama gotta work all day and all night to pay the bills, this certain shit, she yeah, just that ain't bad parenting. She got to hustle to get the money. So when it came to the coaches and just just being around them other kids and other parents at, the, at, at at all the games and at the practice and stuff, that taught us what it was supposed to be. Like it's supposed to be. You're supposed to be in line. You're supposed to mind the adults. You're supposed to pay attention. You're supposed to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it's exactly. teach you to, to be like that when you're away from them too. On every day, and, when, and that help when you when you when you get in the streets and you're doing the wrong, it, that lets you know mm -hmm. you get you got your own mind because you mm -hmm. can talk that your own mind. You still follow your direction, follow your guidance because yes, a lot of times you understand. These older niggas ain't trying to get you in a lot of trouble. I wish we would have listened to what they were telling us when we was 12, 13 years old. I was just talking to the homie right now. One of my homies just got 50 for the life. And I ain't talked to him since he got sent. It's not talked to him. Then he, you know, he got the smile on his face and all that. It's like, at the end of the day, like he just want to be there for his daughter. And like we should have just listened. Mm. And it's crazy because he told me, I was like, yeah, you listen. Like you one of the only ones that was listening. And look where you at now. So I just I appreciate all of that. I just take that shit serious because. It's real. It's like the, the chosen ones, that's what we do. We we are the example of, of having our own mind state because we all have to make them decisions. We all got that day where it's like either we're going to go full-fledged gangbanging or we're going to find a way to find this music path, even though it ain't making no money and I really don't know if it's right. I'm not even that dope, but fuck it. I'm going to try my hand at this because I see this shit really ain't me. I don't really want to go out like that. I had a teacher named Miss Brown. When I, was, I got kicked out of Jordan, I was going to Mayfair for a little bit and I was playing football and basketball and I wasn't really going to class. And it low-key made me hot when she first said it because she was just a little white lady. And she was like, you got to think what's more important. You get good grades. You're not dumb. You just don't do your work. You don't come to class. What's more important, your life or the hood? And I'm thinking, like, she's trying to be funny or some shit. But she was being for real. And that, mm -hmm. now that I look back on it, as far as music go, without y'all uh, in, in Sublime, it ain't no Long Beach music currently. And it ain't never been nobody to really come out on the north. Mm -hmm. 
and that's because it, it, it's just been a, it's a common everybody close common denominator. Everybody hate each other. Like yeah. on the east side, you know, he don't fuck with him, but his cousin is his baby mama. You know, everybody can get along a little bit. You know, yeah. see you when I see you type shit. We ain't never had that. That's why when we seen east siders and shit like that, it just made me think that we fucking up in the sense of how we carry ourselves and how we do everything. So just with the music, I just wanted to. A lot of times we don't feel the need to appreciate or do better because we ain't got no problem. We don't give a fuck about ourselves. Mm -hmm. So that's why I got songs like North North and things like that, just to give somebody a sense of a pride. A pride. Yeah, that North pride. And, and me, I'm from the east side, but I sold dope in the north on 61st and Linden. And that was our spot. And we clashed with the north, and they was our friends when we clashed with them because we was getting money. And then as we grew older, we learned to love them. Like, the art of war breeds camaraderie and respect as well. When you clash with a nigga and the nigga see that you will get down, he respects you. And that's what that did. So now it's like it's time for the North to get theirs in the music world because y'all did that from the streets all the way up. Niggas respect the North on the streets from that level. Now it's time to respect y'all music and, and it's good that, you know, you got Genesis doing his shit, you doing your shit. So doors is getting kicked open. What producers do you really want to fuck with if you had an opportunity to fuck with a producer right now? Oh, wow, Pharrell, definitely Pharrell. Because he, that was, you already know, that was the sound we was coming up. Mm -hmm. Definitely that. Uh, who else? Battle, it's funny, I had, I had some beats from Battle Cat when I was young. For real? One of the first people to give me beats, because uh, I used to kick it at the homie uh, studio, and they we used to do, she walked in like one day, like he was fixing the vent or something. It was like, y'all niggas not rapping, I need y'all to make me 10 songs. And he gave a homie a, a flash drive with like 50, 60 was, beats. Was them beats knocking? Yeah, that was crazy. Like a motherfucker. I be thinking about that, like, what that, what that nigga crazy? What he just sit here and get these niggas? We could have sold them motherfuckers and did anything with what they thinking. Yeah, but see, you got to understand, niggas like Battle Cat, OG. So he know if one of you niggas get on one of them beats and fuck that beat up, you hot and he back hot. That's all it is. It's True, a favor for a favor. I want snacks. I want snacks. I want snacks. But I could wait. No, I could wait. Don't worry, it's fine. Unless I can eat as we do this. Chili cheese. Sick. Blah 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 blah. Hold on, I got beats. Look, hold on. I got mean shit. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're gonna put this shit on repeat. That beat right there, go. We're gonna go with a mean 16. Vince, what it do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They try to kill me in my younger day. Slave to the block, not a runaway. Funny how a nigga get a whip and run away. Funny how a nigga get a chain and run away. They try to kill me in my younger days. We was on the block like it's Hunger Games. We was from the cops like it's Hunger Games. Said we was running from the cops like it's Hunger Gang. Northside LB, niggas can't tell me nothing. I hope the scales be tipping in my favor. I was 13, busting at the neighbors. Then I was 15, fucking on the neighbors. I had a 16 before I turned 16. 14 with an F bing. I made a hundred racks and gave it to my mama. I made 50 racks and bought the homie choppers. I made a hundred racks and gave it to my granny. I make a million dollars when I hit the Grammys. And if I don't, nigga, so what? We got the whole Long Beach sold up. Me and Slope riding the Colton. Me and Trey D riding in the six tray. It was my dreams in my younger days. Hey. They try to kill me in my younger in days. In my younger days. We on the block like it's Hunger Games. That was a mean 16. We get, we, well, I, I got like one cold freestyle a month. The, <laughs> we, can, we, can go, we can go off the top cold and not stop for once a month. After that, niggas gonna have to pull up in that Blackberry like Drake. <laughs> <laughs> we inside the Smoker Studio, Everyday People, AKA Real Nigga Shit. I'm gonna ask you some questions and you can answer to the best of your ability. What's the first thing you do or think of when you wake up? Gotta brush my teeth. 
Get your grill together? Hell yeah. The motherfuckers be calling my phone. I ain't trying to smell that shit myself. I know that's right. <laughs> hot or cold? Uh, hot all the time. Favorite pair of shoes all the time? Huh, Seaman Jordan 4. Black or white? Black. Favorite drink? Lemonade. Favorite sports team? Oh man, Clippers. And it's not new. Catino <laughs> Mobley. Catino Mobley, Sam Cassell. Oh, you go back to this shit? Bro, I'm trying to, come on, man. What you talking about? Young you go young back to this shit? When it, yeah, this <laughs> shit. There's, there's you know what I'm talking about? You yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going, I'm, 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 I'm fucks cold. with him. I'm just saying, you go back to this era when them niggas was doing this yeah, shit. they was cold with them trash ass okay, jerseys on. Okay, okay, okay. You's a real one, nigga. I'm trying to, Billy Crystal, you ain't the only motherfucker. <laughs> Play no goddamn games. If you were stuck on the island for a year and can only listen to three albums, what would they be? Damn. All right, I ain't saying this because you're here, but it'll be Blue Carpet Treatment. Mm. Nigga slept on that one. Mm -hmm. I, don't care, mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. I, I was talking to Q for like four hours about that shit. Mm -hmm. like, nigga, nah, doggy mm -hmm. like, nigga, you old as fuck. That Blue Carpet Treatment was crazy. Whew. It was going to be Blue Carpet Treatment, uh, Dark Twisted Fantasy, Kanye, and uh, shit, what would the third one be? Oh, Miss Education, Lauryn Hill. So gangster. Finish the sentence. I always wake up. I'm trying to get some money. If I could work with anybody dead or alive, I want to work with. Hmm, they dog. If I could see anybody perform dead or alive, I'd want to see. I want to see uh, Red Man and Method Man. I look for blank in a woman. Shit. Quiet. Shit. <laughs> Bitch, shut up. <laughs> if I wasn't a boss, I'd be a. Worker, nigga, I'm gonna get it. My favorite position is. It depends though, cause if she ain't got no ass, you gotta put her on the top. Mm -hmm. But if she got the ass, you gotta bend over. But she gonna be a little hurt about that, so you might just put her on the top and turn her around. Yeah. Look Whatever. At her, look at her back. Yeah, you know, you know. Oh, have look a mirror back. so she can look at herself. Yeah. See something? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my homeboy, Young Vince. Appreciate you for stopping by the GGN nephew. Yeah. Let them know where they can find you at, where they can hit you uh, up. Nah, uh, shit. VinceStaples.com, Vince Staples is Instagram, Vince Staples is Twitter. It ain't hard, ain't that hard to find, man. I got a black 328, so that be me. Stop hitting my car at the food for less on Cherry. I'ma find one of you niggas one day. That should be pissing me off. Oh, that's your shit? Man. My nigga. bad. I threw something at you one day, too. Man, but nah, I didn't a know, nigga, bro. That a was nigga, my bad. A, a nigga left a mixtape on the windshield. <laughs> and got the mad because you drove off and left. Bruh, but I ain't see the shit that the nigga tweeted. On real shit, though, the shit that <laughs> the nigga tweeted me like, hey, why you let my shit fall? I'm like, my nigga, why you ain't just <laughs> hand it to me, bro? You see me right there. But what can your mixtape do for me? Man, I be telling niggas. I'm too bro. busy making my own music. Let, let me speak for you. I'm gonna be your mind state right now. Just that, sit right there. I'm his mind state. What the fuck can your mixtape do for me when I'm too busy trying to make my own music? I love the fact that you want me to try to help you, homie, but I can't really help you when I'm trying to help myself. So help us out by helping me by making some hot shit so when I see you, I know who you are and I wanna fuck with you. You see what I'm saying? Come on now. Put me on a remix. Just come uh, with a thank remix, you. my nigga. Thank you. Church. Preach. Tabernacle.